A special thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Squarespace. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This week's video is a bit of a different one. I feel like in previous years it's been all about like, yo, this is what I love, this is what I love. I don't want to say the plant community was different, but plants in general, the, the market was a little bit different. And I wanted in spirit of that today to talk about plants that I've fallen out of love with, right? And it's not over the last year. There's, a lot of this is over like since I started my channel. This is not like a quick turnaround. And it's not to say, I must say this, that the plant on this list are shit. They're not shit. They're not shit. They're not necessarily difficult to take care of. It's not necessarily I wouldn't recommend something. Would I recommend all of these? Let me check for you very quickly. Uh, in some way, I'd recommend every single one of them, pretty much. Like, there's, there's nothing here that I wouldn't. So these aren't bad plants, right? They're not bad plants. This isn't a Kaylee shitting on plants video at all. If you want one, let me know. Guys, I, I'm down. I'm so down. You just leave it. You leave a comment. I will. Oh, I'm ready, okay? That's not what this is, though. This is me genuinely talking about plants that I've fallen out in love with. And I have some categories. I have some categories. Now, I could probably find you a lot more than these, right? But this is the first video. I'll come up with another in time. There's a few plants on here, so I'm going to talk quite quickly. But I have Alocasia, Philodendron, Monstera, Anthurium, and Syngonium. And there's got to be best part of 20 plants, no problem. So I'll not be talking forever on each plant. But before we start, are you aware of this little guy? If you happen to have missed it, I've launched my fertilizer out into the UK for now, but I know it's making its way into everyone's homes. By the time this video comes out, I actually think some of you might be starting to see some effects from it, I would like to say, because I know a lot of you bought this on launch, which by the way, thank you very much. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. But this is my new feed. This is the first product in a line of plant care products that I'm releasing. More in the works, but let's just get this one out to you first, yeah? This is Nurture Systems Power Grow. This is number one, Power Grow, and it is an adaptive nutrient concentrate. It is a mineral-based fertilizer, and it basically adapts to either soil or hydroponic. You can also use it as a foliar feed. So basically, my aim was to make sure you just had the feed. You just had the feed that did the thing, and you didn't have to buy different feeds. So I tried to make it as general as possible. It has big vitamins, fulvic acid, stuff like that to reduce stress. It has wetting agents to keep things like lecker wet when you water so things don't dry out as quick. Obviously that works for soil too. It has increased levels of calcium and magnesium to help things such as anthurium that really, 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 really appreciate that. You'll know if yours needs some. It's probably looking a little pale, a little pale. If you're feeding your anthurium and it's still a little pale, you probably need CalMag. However, it's already in here. I boosted the levels for you. This does a whole bunch of shit. Personally, I stand by it. If you want to check out anything about this product, I will leave the link down below, but you can visit nurturesystem.co.uk, wherein I did a little experiment and I basically showed you the before and after effects of the feed. Again, it is all there for you, and I will leave the link to that down below if you are interested in checking it out. Do stay up to date with this because I'm going to be expanding as soon as possible. I will just pop this down here and we shall start. I'm going to keep it in the categories because it's easy, and I'm just going to do the categories as I've written them down. So we'll start with alocasia, shall we? Because why not? Last week's video on alocasia, I did the best alocasia that I think possible, and I'll leave that down below for you if you're interested. But for now, I'm going to tell you about two alocasia that I've kind of fallen out in love with. Now, I've probably fallen out in love with a few of them, and it's just for lack of ownership, really. It's nothing else. But I'm going to start with the alocasia copria, also known as red secret. Alocasia copria, red secret. I like this plant. I don't hate it, right? Again, remember this list. I'm not shit talking plants. I'm not here to tell you this plant is shit. Don't buy it. It's not what this is. I just, I don't know. I feel like they are an acquired taste and I feel like I loved it at the time. And I feel like it's one of these plants where people will get rid of this plant. And I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like it's so that they can get things that blend with their collections better. Because if you're going to get shit like this, I feel like you've got a vibe. You've got a vibe, right? And I think a lot of the plants that came into fashion over the last three years, call it, two years, one year, doesn't matter. A lot of the plants that came in, they're not really fitting with that, right? It, it's just, it, it's different. I mean, look at it, guys, look at it. It's it's different. So I think that's probably why I've fallen out of love with it because I, I can't I can't see myself putting it into a collection because it's a bit weird, you know what I mean? If I had a weird collection, hell yeah, it should be pride of place, right? It's great, love the plant, not a problem. And it is in garden centers, so it is good. Is it still being sold? I think so, yeah. I think I see quite a lot of it. My mum really wanted one. I think I picked one up for her one day. Um, at a garden center, that might be, that might have been last year. So they definitely have them around. But again, I just think that people are either over it, happens, plants, fads, all the rest. They're over it or they're it's just not 
fitting into the aesthetic that, that's become very popular, I think, because there is a very popular plant aesthetic around. And I would say what I like kind of fits into that, to be honest, because I think a lot of people prefer a lot of green greenery. It's not always about variegation, which we love. But I think that's why I don't like that. Moving straight on to the Alocasia Sabrina. Now, this is funny because I've talked this up in my last week's video, I think it is, in my uh, my top anthuriums of all time, because I do think it is. It is. My problem is I've seen too much of it. It's so hard to explain this. I do think it's one of my top anthurium of all time because it's, it's literally, it's fucking iconic. But it's a bit like saying the Monstera Oblique is one of my top Monstera of all time. Spoiler alert, it's probably in there, right? It's a bit like saying that because it is. And my shop's logo, if you can't tell, it's the Monstera Oblique, right? It's iconic. But am I sick of looking at it? Yeah, a little bit, right? So there is a bit of a difference. But I'm putting Alocasia Sabrina in here just because I feel like when I was walking around nurseries in 2020, that shit was flooded, guys. That shit was flooded. And I, it's just like anything, it happens with a lot of stuff in here. And you know what? A lot of the stuff in here, the, it's happened for this reason, but I just see too many. So it's not like I'll never recommend the plant because it's great, get it, literally get it. But I'm not obsessed with it anymore. I recognize how iconic it is. And this the good comparison here would be the Monstera Oblique for me. Well, I always love the plant, of course. I owe so much to that plant, it's not even funny. But I'm just not I'm not excited by it. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Moving on to philodendron. And we have a few in here. We have maybe about eight, something like that. So let's just get cracking. No order. I've just lobbed them into a list. First one, philodendron dark lord. I know, I know, I know what you're gonna say. I know, I love this plant. But guys, <laughs> did you ever see how much of this plant I had? I don't know if y'all did. I like to think you did on the documentary. I can't remember how much got shown because of so many plants. I had a lot of this plant, guys. I had a lot of this plant. And all the propagating it. Do I still not have marks on the floor from the blood from these plants? Maybe. Because these bleed when you cut them and it gets fucking everywhere, right? It's not ideal. I just, ah, I just got so sick of them. They are fantastic though, to be honest. I could see them in garden centers, no problem further down the line. They're not the prettiest plants in terms of like being like bushy and compact. They are a little bit more like long and leggy generally, but I could see them being in garden centers because they are tough as nails. I'm just sick of looking at them. I'm sick of looking at them. Absolutely beautiful though. The the mature ones are absolutely beautiful. That is when they're young. Nah, we, we don't we don't dig those. But yeah, there's no other reason other than just sick of looking at those. Right, next one I've got a vendetta again. So I'm looking at two of them there. There's another one over there that's bigger, but it's just, it's fucked. It won't grow properly. And that is the gorgeous. It's so pretty guys. It's it's so pretty. The philodendron was, was, what was, was Gwixii? What? Someone told me how to pronounce this once and y'all have been telling me for years how to pronounce this. Please write it again in like phon phonetic, is that how you say it? Uh, because I can't fucking remember how to say it. But I'm calling it was Gwixii, right? It's written down. It's written down. I can't. What do you want from me? It's written down. I'm so sorry. This plant is fucking stunning, right? It is. I absolutely love this plant. However, the thing that nobody tells you, although you told me after the fact, which by the way, thank you, you really provided me with the foreshadowing there. It don't fucking grow. Now, honestly, mine look really sickly. They look really sickly all the time. Now, don't get me wrong. They're planted in something too small. They regularly run out of water. There's probably a few reasons why they're sickly. I don't feed them either. I don't feed them either. Maybe I should put some of my feed on it. Maybe that would fix it actually. I've never even thought of that just because they sit up on sort of like these little, can you see this? No, you can't. They sit on the ledge baskets out of the way in tiny little pots, but I have two of them and then I have a bigger one. And since I reported it, it just, it just hates me. I've complained about this plant a lot. Visually, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So much so that I think my parents would like it actually. I might ask them if they want one, see if they can grow it. Cause my dad seems to be able to grow a lot of shit to be honest. So he can probably grow it just to spite me, but I might offer them one, but I love this plant. It just, it's fucking really hard to grow. <laughs> like, and I don't often say that, guys. And I definitely don't often say that about philodendron. You don't really hear me say it. It's not often. It's not often. But that plant fits firmly in there. Um, I feel like a few of you told me it was more, it grows better outdoors, which obviously isn't an option here. So maybe that's a problem. I don't know. Am I going to give up on it? No. It will be here till it either grows or dies. I might repot it at some point. You let me know what you think I should do with it. I would have loved it in my house, but the cats will absolutely go for it because if it does get big and mature, just, you can see from the photograph, the way it looks, the cat's gonna want that shit. If I was a cat, I'd be all over that, so. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. You can filter the templates on the website by type. I found a nice one here for someone wanting to start a blog. I just really like the 
layout of this one and it's called Brower. You can preview it as well before you try it and it gives you a dummy website to click around just to see if you like it before you actually commit to it. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from voiceover me. Back to the video. Anyway, moving on. Oh my God, right. I feel like for this next plant, y'all will agree with me. Y'all are gonna agree with me with this. I feel like when I say it, you might know why I've fallen out of love with it. Maybe, maybe. It's for a functional reason, right? If that helps. But the next plant I've fallen out of love with is a philodendron melanocrysum. Do you know why I've fallen out of love with this, guys? It's because, essentially, if you buy them small, they are going to stay small. Like, they don't size up very well. If you want a nice, pretty vining, whatever, that's cool. But to get them to size up, honestly, to the people that have, credit to you, because you've really put the effort in, I feel like. This isn't something, in my opinion anyway, that just passively gets bigger. It, it's not like, for example, Philodendron Glorious, right? I have that upstairs, I have some down here. That shit just gets bigger. That shit just gets bigger on a pole. You don't have to try, right? It should size up, especially if you feed it. It's gonna go nuts, right? And that's probably due to the Gloriosa in it. Don't get me wrong. Don't not get me wrong. The Melanocrysum in it, however, Jesus Christ, it, does it think it's Mykins? Is that the problem that it's having? Is this like a weird fight club thing? Because I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. Let me know if you agree with that, but I cannot get them to size up. It's not impossible. I'm not saying it's impossible, but in a, in a passive care, normal way, how I would treat everything else, they don't fucking size up. I'm sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong. Fight me. And I've seen, I've seen plenty of people on Instagram, by the way, that have big ones. Honest credit to you, credit to you. I do not have the time or the inclination. And I do have some. I'm looking at some melanocrysum now, but you never know they were melanocrysum. The leaves are about this big and it's just, it's literally just growing up and down the shelves because I've just left it and somehow it's alive. So I love it because it's tough, mature. They are absolutely incredible. Like I've unboxed some absolute beauties in my time, as we know. But in a modern day world where I have to make the effort, nay, nah, nay, nah, nah. Right, next on the list, Philodendron Painted Lady. I feel like I never thought they were gorgeous. I thought they were nice. They were nice. Do I have one on the wall still or is it dead? Uh, it might be dead. I did have one on the wall. I always thought they were all right, but they pff, just grew out of them real fast. That that didn't even last long for me, liking them at all, at all. I think when I did my like plant downsizing when I had to move house, it was one of the first things to go. I was just like, I don't care about this. It was nice at the time and I think it's always nice to try it out. But if you've seen the Philodendron Orange Marmalade, that is way nicer plant. It's a way nicer plant. And I do have a couple of those. And the new leaves on those come in really, really orange. Like it kicks shit out of Painted Lady, quite honestly. It does have similar kind of mottling and vibe or whatever. So I'd actually recommend that over that. Plus it actually stays way more compact. Way more compact. Uh, let me know what you think about the Painted Lady. For me, no particular reason. I just, I've gone off it. Don't like how it looks anymore. Sorry if you don't want to get... I can't breathe, you know. I don't have any of my little Vicks spray. I have to film a ton of videos today. It's not good. So I'm probably going to gradually get worse. Anyway, next on the list. I, I, why do I not like this? I, can't, I, don't, I don't even know if I could quantify it. I just think I liked it at the time. I don't dislike it. I just, I don't care either way, I guess. And that is the Philodendron Tortum. Again, not hating on it. It's a nice plant. It's cool. It's different. I think to put that in a collection, it's got a, it, it's a little bit like the Cupria. It's got to go with the vibe. I feel like if you've got a lot of palms and a lot of things like that, it would fit quite nicely in a lot of ferns. It would look beautiful in a collection. But I just feel like for people that are obsessed with all the big cards, the big juicy things it's not gonna look great unless it feels like a certain spot or a certain table and it looks like oh you know like a bit artsy then it just it, it's got no place again controversial i know but that's kind of what i think about that don't hate it i think i still have one on the living wall by the way i actually own one but it, i i just i don't really care anymore i don't really care anymore and there shouldn't be any uh it shouldn't be wrong for people to say this about plants by the way i think there's there's points where people get very sometimes we always treat we almost treat plants like animals as pets and while that's fine I think a lot of people project that on other people sometimes and I feel like you've got two camps of people and I should talk about this in a video. Sorry, sidetrack. I feel like there are a certain camp of people that treat plants as pets or, you know, I don't want to say children. That's a bit far out. They treat them a bit more like that and then there's other people that treat them like, I don't know, what could you say they treat them like? Like a collector's item, really. Like a, a bag or some sort of limited edition something or other or whatever. They, they treat them more like that. And some people treat them more like, oh, this is just decor. So there's there's different camps of people that treat plants in a different way. I treat them, where do I say it? Decor. 
investment. I used to sit more in the pet camp, but quite honestly, working here, it will it will change that for you. It has to, because it means if something dies, you're gonna have a really bad week and you can't go on like that. So I've changed the camp that I'm in a little bit, but I kind of like it because it means I can do videos like this and I can talk about plants in a, in a more neutral way because it's easy to, if that makes sense. Anyway, sideline, I don't even know how I got onto that. Anyway, next one, next one. Philodendron White Knight. I don't hate it. Again, I think this is because I like the white wizard more. I don't dig the rhubarb vibe. I don't, I don't. I, I can't remember whether I like them. I, I mean, I did like them both at one point, obviously, but I think I like the white wizard more quite quickly. I also feel like the variegation on the white wizard is just nicer. I, I can't tell you why. It just seems more like white, like really white. But I'll skip over that one very quickly because that I know the reason why. It's not because I dislike it. It's because I would just choose the white, uh, the white wizard over the night. Right, next one. Oh, I like this plant and I, I, st I do still like it. It's just, again, it, eh. I think they're hard to grow. Hard to kill, but hard to grow. Really hard to explain. But the next one is Philodendron Gigas. Now, they're beautiful. They change a lot when they are mature, so it's worth looking at them mature. I probably got a picture of a non-mature one. Probably one of a pole. Who knows? But to grow them out from nothing, they propagate quite well, I think, from what I remember. It's been a long time since I've done it. Uh, average or above average, I would say. Um, but to grow them out, you're getting like a little small, little itty bitty plant. But they don't really die either, so they're okay, but again, ugh. I, I almost sometimes put it in the Melanocryzum camp because to get a really big Gygus, I actually feel like it takes a similar amount of work. Like I feel like a uh, sorry, a Melanocryzum cross with a Gygus would be somewhat difficult. Hard to kill, don't get me wrong, it'd be tough, but I feel like it'd be somewhat difficult to size up. Let me know if you agree with that. Let me know if that hybrid exists. I might know about it, I might just be forgetting it because I've been ill. I'd forget to put socks on today if I wasn't wearing shoes, so it is what it is. Ooh, everyone knows why this is on here. Everyone one knows why this is on here. The variegated Bellatai. Now listen, 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 listen. So from a variegation perspective, I'm sick of its shit. I've got, I've still got my variegated Bellatai here that is green every so often. And I mean, like every two years, it spits out a little bit of variegation, then it just fucks off. So that's real nice. Thank you for that. Started off as a half moon. This is why I have a vendetta against half moon leaves. Uh, I've been scammed out of variegated Bellatai's. Oh, just, just so much shit. So much shit. They, they don't like being propagated that well either. Um, which I don't think I have problems with Bellatai itself. It's just more the variegated one. I don't know why. But again, could just be my plant. I just haven't had the best time. And I'm still reminiscing over that original variegated bill tie that I sold. And I will never, ever, ever forget that plant. I never will. Because I didn't want to sell it. But I did what was right by my business because I needed some capital. And at the time, it was like, very expensive because no one had them really. <laughs> So I, I've fallen out of love with it, but I think I think we can both agree, guys. I've paid my time. It's paid my time. I've paid my dues. I've done my time. And I've tried with this plant. I've, I've fucking tried. I've tried. So I'm just going to write this one off. Would I say no to another one? No, but I'll wait till it's cheap and I'll try again. Maybe finally I'll change my opinion. Maybe finally. But that plant's cost me thousands, guys. Literally thousands. I haven't really made it back either. Oh, I would kill to unblock my nose right now. <laughs> Monstera. Only two. Only two. Now, I could have probably thought of more. And as I say, if I do another video, I will add them in. But I have two. First one, Variegated Anzonii. Uh, I feel like I was only ever in love with this plant, like, very, very early on. Uh, it was when I swapped an Oblica for one. So that was, like, 20... Was it 2019, maybe? Because I remember I had a leaf that was, like, rogue, and it sat in a glass on my table in my old flat, if you remember that. some Someone somewhere will remember that. I felt like I was in love with them then, and I feel like I was just going against the grain a little bit when everyone was buying them, because I knew how easy they were to propagate, and they just grew, like, you know, literally, like, money on trees. And I didn't... I don't think I really sold any in that time, but it just, it just started pissing me off. Not people making money off them, that's not really what I mean, just, I just felt like it was overhyped, I guess is essentially that. Um, so it made me fall out of love with it a bit. Do I have some? Yeah, we're fucking tons. <laughs> I've got one there that actually needs to be shipped out, it's been sold. Um, I actually, you won't see it because it's in a mass full of other variegated shit right here where I'm swizzling my fingers, but there is a huge variegated Ansonii in there. It's like 15 leaves tall, and they're all very, very nice. They're all like half moon, it's all really pretty. Really, really nice, I just, I just fall out of love with it, guys. I don't really know what else I can really tell you. There's no big reasons other than a bit overhyped. That puts a sour taste in most people's mouths. That's me as a seller, guys. That's me as a seller. So God knows what it's done for all you lot. Anyway, next plant. Uh, ooh, do I have reasons for this? I'm not sure what my reasons are. I might have to wing this as I go along. Next one is Monstera Eskeleto. <laughs> 
Oh, or a skeleto. Sorry guys, I'm trying to blow my nose. I, oh, I, they, I've moved the tray. Where did I move that tray to? There was a tray down there for overgrown a skeleto. But it used to be formerly known as Epipremnoides and then it was discovered that it's not actually Epipremnoides and it's much smaller. I've had great success off this plant. I've frequently put it in investment plants and everything like that. I do like the plant. I just, I guess I'm just sick of it. Mainly because I'm probably dealing with it on the smaller side. I'm not seeing it with like the majesty that, it, that you guys are probably growing it, to be honest. I tend to get leaves about this big. I'll get maybe three of them. That's probably about as tall as my head, by the way. I have a tiny head. Um, maybe about three of these and sell them as like a three-leafed wonder kind of thing. I've dealt with them at that size for ages because when you prop them down, they end up being about that. Um, so I don't really see them in all their glory. Do I love them? Yeah, I think they're great. I just, they don't excite me, I guess. And again, I've had like two trays of overgrown Escalito to the point where I sorted the unit out a while ago and I did like a big tidy and I had to just cut runners and just throw them in the bin. I had like three meters of runners off like each plant. Each plant in there, there was about 20, 20, 30 in there. I had to just cut them off and bin them because it's just too much plant. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's the level we're at now in the plant community, guys. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that in 2020? Holy shit. Right. I still can't breathe. Amphirium. Vichii. I know. I... I hear you guys. I I literally hear you. I hear you. Because I put this in my top anthurium of all time. And this is a little bit like the Sabrina thing, in which you cannot really not. It's the king anthurium. It's iconic. There isn't really an anthurium that's like it. It is very unique. And I don't know why I've fallen out of love with it. Again, I, it's probably for other reasons. I don't see it. I don't see it in collections. No one else seems to be excited about it. Um, I have one behind me. Oh, I've... Ugh. Moved it before this video to sit on this stool. It was on this stool. It's now right at the end of this aisle. But I have one at the moment that's flowering, so I'm keeping an eye on it. But generally speaking, eh. Like, again, I, I've never seen one in real life, actually, that is really big and long and sexy. And you know what? I'm going to go to Kew Gardens very soon, in about a week or so. And I'm actually hoping to see some big specimens of things. I'm hoping to feel different about a lot of these plants. And maybe I'll come back and tell you that I feel different about things. And it's like, oh, shit, I've changed my opinion on. But for now, I literally, guys, my King Anthurium look shit and that's on me don't go wrong literally um but the leaves are only like this and it is a narrow form as well it's really sexy but it only looks like this i think that's why because if it was a really big long sexy thing i'd probably be i'd fall back in love with it again straight away so it's down to my growing we'll call that one down to my growing i will take responsibility for that one Ooh, kind of cheating here this encompasses a lot of plants uh, but i've written down anything pendulous that isn't vitari folium so i'm not talking about things like the queen anthurium like warox by the way i'm talking about literally like uh oh god Ooh, I'm testing my knowledge now. Big Bill, um, Wendlingerii, Pallidiflorum, although I do love Pallidiflorum. Uh, what else have I even had? Uh, S. P. Morona, like all, all of the long belt ones. Um, the only reason that I've fallen out of love with them is because time and time again, I come back to the Vitari folium because it's so good. And it's the reason you see that one more in a garden center or whatever. It's why you see it because it's proven itself against the others. So a lot of the times I find myself recommending it and blah, 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 blah. And it gets to the point where I don't recommend the others. I've got the most beautiful narrow form Pallidiflorum that I would pick up for you, except it's flowering. And I Ben is going to kill me if I touch it, literally. But I've got, it's beautiful. It's about that thick. It's about as thick as a ruler, right? And it's about that long. It's a stunning plant. Absolutely stunning plant. Really, really beautiful. Got a really good deal on that. But I won't ever really talk about it or recommend it because I want to recommend good things to you. Obviously, I want to show you new things. It's not that. Just most of the time when I'm doing videos of like, oh, here's the best thing. In my opinion, it's always Vitari folium. So that's the only reason. I, I do think they're gorgeous. Specifically, the Palette of Florum, by the way. Oh my God. But that's probably why. Vitari folium just always wins. Cool, cool, cool. Sorry, guys. Swiping off some emails. Oh, okay. Just getting some messages about cats in heat. That's very exciting. Not for me. Not for me. Not for me. <laughs> Essentially, um, I, I know somebody that is looking for a cat based on how lovely mine are. So the breeder, uh, who is also a very good friend of mine. I think I've told you that before. Um, I covered this in my kidding video, but the breeder's cat has just come into heat. And I, was, I literally had a conversation with her yesterday. Like someone's interested in, in a cat, male or female, doesn't matter. It's more about temperament, blah, blah, blah. You guys have seen my cats on Instagram. It's not even funny, literally. Um, and they've just come into heat, so... So anyway, right, we are now, oh no, we've got one more, we've got one more on Ethereum, and the plant that I'm completely over has got to, well, there's a few actually, but let's just condense this down. Like, for example, Magnificum, can't be asked, cannot be asked. I've said this before, but the reason actually why I'm not bothered about Magnificum, I'll add it in as a bonus, is for the same reason about this one, because I'm not bothered anymore about the Anthurium Forgetii. Why is it? Why is it? Stay with me. It's because I like the dark form. So when I say Magnificum, when I say Forgetii, I'm talking about these, right? I'm talking about the 
the typical ones with the silver vein. There's just something about me and liking dark shades. I absolutely adore the dark form for Getty Eye. It's absolutely stunning and you don't see it enough. You do not see it enough. That is one of my favorite anthuriums of all time. Literally, it's right up there. I think it was either number, it was, oh, what was it? Was it two or three? Can't remember. Love that plan. And for the Magnificum, we've got Verde. So really, I'll talk about them both. Those are the reasons why, because there's a nicer version. So there, I'm being a bit specific there. I'm getting a little bit version specific on y'all, which I, I haven't really done for the other things, don't get me wrong. Like, I didn't say that I hated Anthurium Vici that wasn't the narrow form with the, the ridges close together. I didn't bother, but I am for this. But that, honestly, uh, Dark Form Forgetty Eye is, is literally a stunning plant. It's a stunning plant. The regular is just a bit meh. Like, I would just choose the dark. So there's no other reason other than that. Right, Thinganian. Thinganium. So, first one, uh, what are the reasons? Other, others are prettier, others are prettier. Uh, Syngonium Three Kings, I've had this before. I've still got loads of it, where is it? It's up there in an aisle, it's taken over, it's literally taken over. It just doesn't excite me because it's in like a big tray with loads of Syngonium in it and so many of the Syngonium in there look better. It's just not one I look at and I'm literally directly, when it's in a tray like that, I'm directly comparing it to other Syngonium and it just doesn't flow my bow anymore. Something is crawling on the top of my unit, I hope it's a pigeon and not a a person. So Three Kings is on there, the Albo is on there. It grows like a weed, which you think is great, and it is to a point, but when you see it every day, guys, it's it's one of these things. You just get bored of it. You just get bored of it. Don't I have any left? I always look to where things used to be, you know. That tells you how long things stay here. Literally, there's a gap. Where is it? If I do it on camera here, there is nothing. There used to be Syngonium Albo there, but I've moved it and I probably got rid of it all. Oh, there's like a Tolkien Albo in, in the Syngonium tray or something. Yeah, no, the reason is just that it's everywhere. Do I love the plant? Yes. Do I recommend it? Yes, all the time. Great beginner's plant. For me, uh, I'd rather have literally a non-variegated one. Not like a plain green Syngonium, if you know what I mean, but I'd rather have, say, the Panda or the Milk Confetti or something like that. Like just something else really so that's why that's on there the aurea kind of same kind of same these held their value longer i will definitely tell you that uh, over the white again more of a collector's item so how do i explain this they hold their value more and this is the same thing by the way you can liken this directly to the variegated monstera versus the aurea so the white versus the yellow essentially same thing but the yellow holders value even though people don't want it as much because collectors buy it so it becomes a collector's item which means there's less of it around which means the price goes up it's do you get what i mean whereas the the variegated monstera it's I mean I'd like to think it's saturated now for sure great if you want one you can probably find one maybe about 30 pounds a leaf at least in the UK might still be worse in the US but generally speaking because it's more of it obviously demand's going down because we're not in 2020 anymore yay um but that's normally why yellow things cost more it's really weird people don't want them as much as a result people don't really have them as much so you can't get them as much so the price is higher because if you know you've got one you're going to make people pay for it because someone will want one does that make any sense I feel like that should make some sense but it's the same thing and again I'm just sick of seeing them. The grape plant, a little bit harder to look after, only slightly, I think, like very slightly than the white, but good plant. I'm sick of seeing them, really. I still have, I definitely have two trays of those, the uh, the Aurea, for sure. Next plant I've had a bit of a journey with. I'm talking about the Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor. This had a huge, and I mean a huge value attached to it. I bought it when it was very high value. Uh, this is when I bought plants from overseas, and they, was it twice they got destroyed in customs for having pests on? Uh, if you remember that a while ago, it was a long time ago, it was a huge batch of plants. It was like $10,000 worth of plants that died twice and eventually the the seller sent them over about twice and I think eventually we just called a truce and nobody got anything she was out plants times two I was out of well everything really so I think we called a truce on that but anyway my point is in this I was annoyed because the red spots were particularly hard to replace because I bought them tiny and there was only three of them and I spent a lot of money on them uh, I, I eventually later got one can't remember where or I got one at a later date it was fine and I kept that, but like, oh God, like a month later, the value just went pew. Like now you can get for like a tenner, which, ugh, something falling in price after I've bought it, guys, it's allowed to piss me off. Do you know why? Because it pisses all of you off. It's a normal thing. It's not like I can't be annoyed about it just because I sell plants. Do you know what I mean? I think whether you're buying or selling plants, when that happens, it's it's annoying. It's annoying. You've wasted loads of money and you couldn't even sell it back if you hoped to. So for that reason, eh. I do love the plant. It's beautiful. It's beautiful looking. My specimen that I ended up with, though, wasn't the strongest, I don't think. I've got one down here. Is it literally, is that it? Growing away. Is it this one? Yeah, it's down here. It's, ugh, has it got better? Not really, no. It's okay. It's got better in later in life, but for 
the most part, it just looks like a pink splash. So that's down to my specimen. So perhaps if I had a different specimen, I would say something different to you. But generally speaking, it, it's pissed me off, that plant. It's pissed me off. That's not to say I wouldn't have one. I don't feel like my house is going to be a Syngonium house, though. Don't know why. Just whenever I've been thinking about plants to take in, that's Syngonium generally just on, on that list. Don't know why. Maybe because I see them being on poles. Uh, but that's definitely one of them that pisses me off. But that is for a, a money reason. A little bit like the variegated bill tie, I think. That's that's pissed me off a lot as well. <sighs> Deep breaths, because my nose is closed up on me. So if I sound terrible, I do apologise. It's triggering you. But that was my list of plants that I've fallen out of love with. Let me know if you agree or disagree. I'm probably going to do more of these because honestly, I can find more than this. I can find more than this and I can categorize it. This was just ones that I found at the time. So let me know what you think about that. If there's a plant for you that like you've spent loads of money on, you've fallen out of love with it, or you've just been really annoyed by the whole journey of it, watching it online. Like for example, um, Monstera Oblique definitely pissed a lot of people off, I think. Spiritus has probably pissed a lot of people off. There's a few plants that I think a lot of people could get quite passionate about when they talk about because um, some of them have had monumental crashes. In fact, the Spiritus is one of the quickest crashes I think I've seen a plant crash, actually. Is it the quickest? Could be, could be. I need to do a video on that. That's a really good video idea. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Link to my feed is below. Link to any other things I've mentioned is down below. And if you'd like to see more of my content and you'd like a little browse, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. That's it for this week's video, guys. I will love you, leave you, and I will see you in the next one. Hopefully I can breathe by then. Bye, guys.